All right, friends, welcome back to Jason's Design Shop where we've got this big slab of cherry here. We're gonna run it through the planer. I had to trim off the edges here. Um, hopefully we'll be able to do some grinding here and give it a fake live edge to match this one. It'll come these two sides and then we'll decide whether we wanna continue that around all the sides or leave those hard cut and just do a round over on them. And uh, probably thinking of filling all these cracks with epoxy, um, thinking about black and uh see how it looks when it's done been sitting around here for a couple years should be nice and dry let's do it Bunch of times through. Beautiful, huh? Alright, see what we can do with it. Alright, this looks great. I'm gonna get some epoxy in these cracks. I'll have to sand all this. It's pretty rough there. We're gonna probably have to do some belt sanding because when you get tear out like that, it's deeper and this wood is really hard. And cool in there. It's funny this limb got wrapped around by the tree. And it's the most beautiful spot right in here, I think. And, and this is really cool. So there's a little bit of rot right here. So nothing uh, this can't take out of there. And then we'll probably see how this is a little bit of an angle. We'll angle all this over, make it look more like a live edge. Round over these sharp edges. Smooth out really, really good. And just four little uh, rubber buttons for it to stand on. So you can just so you can just reach right there and grab and pick it up. Cut on that would be awesome. All right, I took this outside. I did not video and use this cool uh, blade on the grinder to uh, create a rough live edge all the way around. That was the already live edge. Created a live edge all the way down here that was just cut flat. Same here. Pretty cool. So it's still too rough. So now we're gonna switch this out, switch this blade out for the, uh, let's see, let's use this one, a sanding disc and smooth it out a little bit. And then we're gonna have to belt sand this down because we got some tear out here. See if we can get this much smoother, take a layer off. It's gonna be hard, but that's how you gotta do it. All right, let's do this. It's gonna make some dust in here, I hate that. When I was done, I hit it with my hand right there. Is it gonna bleed? I should be wearing gloves. That's my warning shot. All right, turn this around, put my gloves back on. I used it when I did the, the crazy cutter. I don't know why I'm not wearing them now. Now we can really start to see the beauty, even with that 40 grit belt sander. Really see this is going to be just beautiful. Some of the figuring here, the swirl over here, the other side's incredible as well. This thing coming across here, the swirl, it almost looks like it's on a plane rather than flat. Some of the cool figuring around this, it's going to be incredible. But I've got to start, here we go, from, that's, that's 40 grit. I could probably do a 50 grit, but we'll do. 100, that's pretty rough. 100, 120, 150, 180, oh, we got that order. 2, 240, 3, But before we do all that work, we need to uh, epoxy all the holes. So we've got to find out what color we want to put in here and puddle it in there and block the other side, flip it over, make sure it's all the way on both sides. Belt sander again, just to smooth out that top part and work our way up through the grits. So epoxy's next. All right, I taped this up. It was so focused, I started pouring it in and I forgot to turn the camera on. But there we go, a little crack there. I taped this off, a big crack through here. We wanna get really solid. And uh, 
Now we got all this mess to fill in here. Too much, that's for sure. So now what do I do with that? All right, I poured epoxy in all the little holes on my tabletop, everywhere I could think of. I found some wood with some holes in it, and then it was coming out the ends. <laughs> Oops, I had to clog the ends. Poured the epoxy in there. As it got thick, I shoved it into the cracks on the sides, all right? And any, any little crack I could think of here. All right, here's the next day, the results. Pretty good on this one. There is a dimple going down, so we're gonna to have to pour a little more into that. And these micro cracks, some are good, bridged across, but others are all rough and it's settled down inside there. So we're gonna pour a little more on top of that. Maybe that one. A lot of the ones on the side, I noticed, it did not go in there, even when it was thick and I tried to push it in the cracks. All right, there it is. Puddled on a little deeper. Belt sander will rip all that off flat. That's not sinking anymore, so I think we're good. I even put some tape on the side and poured in my extra there, and hopefully it'll go down and into the hole, the crack on those two ends, as well as down here. So far, only leaked a little bit. I think it might be successful. All right, let's use this thing. we're looking for even no pits right out all the way in all that even this funny little ones here that's the top we want that to be cool and beautiful now we got to get the hand grinder and hit some of these spots and see how well we did mixing up another batch for the other side of course got all that on Teeny little holes here to put it in. All right, here's the other side. Let's uh, sand this down and see if we're ready to work up through all the grits and get it really beautiful. There might be a spot here and right there that we need a little bit more. Although this is the bottom. Okay, let's do it. We're done. Time to go through all the grits. See you up at uh, 1000. Right, just had to show you at 400 grit. This is just fire look at this flames in there the cool lines there and this stuff is just incredible love all of this look at that super smooth on the other side it's probably going to be the top side same thing just fire all around that and cool lines swirl this thing going through all right so I took it up to 1500 grit, it was beautiful, and then I raised the grain, and now it's all rough again. So hopefully I didn't uh, do that too late, and I won't have to go up through all those grits again. Hopefully the uh, high grit will take care of it. We'll try the 1500 if we're lucky, and then we'll work backwards. Oh boy. We got lucky, the 1500 grit took out that raised grain and brought us right back to super, super baby butt smooth. And we even starting to get some reflection and clearness in the epoxy pieces, which is great. I mean, you can see down through that one to a piece of wood that crisscrosses, which is cool. Alrighty. Now, let's get some oil on there. Protect it. All right, time to put some cutter and board oil on there. This has got to be everyone's favorite part. Mine, too. I'm going to throw some... Uh, Little stands on here, probably four is what will balance it. So we can do both sides. Let's start with the bottom. 
down slowly on that. Spread it out, flip it over, and let it soak overnight. I have a dust-free fingers. Let's just do one hand for now. Whoa, look at that golden color. Wow. Let's go into this. Ooh, that is fire. Amazing. I think we need a little more. I don't want much because I'm going to order some walrus oil after this dries a little for a while. Almost probably a, two weeks. And then it kind of loses its uh, that beautiful color. So uh, they're saying that walrus oil will hold its sheen and look, wet look, much longer. And so the customer doesn't have to constantly oil it like this. Of course, they don't think about it probably. It just sits there getting dry. Maybe it'll crack and these cracks start opening up again. We don't want that. So we're going to put some good quality oil on there, I guess. I have to order it. You can see I've done quite a few of this. I'm down to here. dry quickly over here it's soaking in this was a very dry piece of wood wrapped inside because this had been cut off and was in the whole knot dried and then the new wood grew around it as the tree got bigger so we're probably gonna have to give this just a little bit extra Just fire. And since the wood is older, it's already had its uh, change of getting darker. So all these reds were pretty light. But once it sits there for a long time and ages, uh, dries out, it uh, gets much darker. Over like six month period, it just gets more rich. That's incredible. Look at that. So we'll put the four legs on. I'll show you that next. And uh, we'll essentially be done. All right, we took order on the Walrus Oil Cutting Board Oil Original Formula. Presents wood cutting boards, 100% food grade safe. Easily maintain and restore wood surfaces. All right, we're gonna put a good layer of this stuff on there. But first, to get it up off the ground so it can be all around it and dry, we got the little legs for it. Little rubber, uh, so it'll slide around on your countertop when you're cutting. So let's put these on. Great. Well, now, whoa, soil. Probably won't take much. Ingredients, coconut oil, ah, beeswax, pure mineral oil and vitamin E. So that wax should help create a coating on the top, which will make it last a lot longer, make it shiny. All right, here we go. Let's put on the dry stuff first. Finally, let's buff it out. All right, turn it over, do the other side. Let's compare that side, the shine, to this side. Oh yeah, this is more rich. Look at that red. And the quick wipe down and polish on the top side, we are done.
right, friends, that's it for Jason's Design Shop and the cutting board or couture board with the legs on it and polished to 1500 grit. Maybe excessive, but boy, it sure looks amazing. And uh, I think they're gonna love it. We use that uh, for the first time walrus oil, stepping it up, hopefully, and it will stay beautiful for a longer amount of time uh, before the customer needs to re-oil it and finish it. That's it. Like, subscribe, check you out in the next video. Bye, friends.